Hey, everybody. Welcome back. My name is Todd Ronan, and I host Reality Forecast with my buddy, Daniel. Hey, guys. Daniel Laxton. When it comes to remote viewing, a lot of people aren't really super familiar. The, one of the things that I think that the audience should do is they should hit subscribe and hit the bell because you have two of these coming out every week. Someone as a novice or is just kind of curious about it, understand the history and the evolution, especially the evolution when it comes to how you teach remote viewing for your, through your course tab. Yeah, I think I'll answer the personal evolution part of it. But my personal journey began in 2002 when I took a remote viewing course out in Portland from Major Ed Dames. And then I went and actually met one of his protégés uh, and taught with him, uh, worked on his remote viewing project and his remote viewing course for maybe six or eight years. Then I met a couple of other remote viewers online and learned their methods. So John Vavanko was taught by kind of an offshoot of Courtney Brown. I've taken Courtney Brown courses too at the Farside Institute. I'm taking advanced scientific remote viewing, the transdimensional remote viewing system, uh, learned control remote viewing, learned Hawaii remote viewing guild system. And I developed my own method called temporal awareness perception remote viewing. So it takes you out of time that you're in now puts you in a forward state so that you can get information from your future state and bring it back to you in the present. And it's kind of a hybrid of personal healing, personal protection, everything you can do in remote viewing. And like we go pretty quick over the six weeks up to stage five. And I talk about other things that other remote viewers don't want you to talk about. And then in stage nine, there is a medical template that I use and teach people how to do uh, stage eight is hooked on phonics. Stage seven is like a b binary muscle testing. Um, and then that's all we really teach up to stage nine. That's amazing. But on average, on, on other, uh, previous, you know, throughout history, there's been uh, a few types of remote viewing educational programs out there and you've taken so many of them. But uh, on average, what is there usually how many stages for, say, the in the past versus what you are? So teaching? like there are weekend remote viewing courses you can take and you're going to learn things over the course of four days, which is really compacted together. Uh, it's probably like 12 to 18 hours in that four days. And you kind of forget things. My theory is if you have a question when you're out walking your dog and you want to ask me, I want to be there for you to answer the question. So the course of six weeks, people are going to get questions that come up that they want answered and they can write them down. I can give them feedback on it, but they also get homework that they can do. So you've got like, you know, six weeks of homework to do remote viewing sessions, to do drawing sessions, to do uh, meditation, to do emotional techniques. And there's a whole different uh, sort of cornucopia of projects I give you to do. It makes you a better round of remote viewer when you're doing it. But you know, I don't want to talk about my course. I just want to answer questions about remote viewing. How how can one verify to, to know? Well, if it's in the past, it's it's very difficult. But That's a good point. Uh, how did you prove to yourself, even if it was like years ago? Yeah, so there's a misnomer in the remote viewing world that 100% of what somebody's viewing is true. That's kind of not factual. Um, imagination creeps in when you're doing a remote viewing session, and even if you're a trained and seasoned remote viewer, you're not you're not a hundred percent infallible. And so learning where your ego is at and learning where to write stuff down, you don't really, you'll never know if you're hundred percent correct until the end of time, until you expire, but you can get a pretty good percentage. If you know what the cue is, when you're done with your session, you open up the envelope, you look at the cue, you can go back and you can track through a remote viewing journal, circling what you know is right, what you know is false. And that way you get to be a better remote viewer. No matter what skill set you have, if you're a golfer, you're, you're not going to hit a hole in one every time. And that's what people, I think it's a misconception that people have with remote viewing, but because of the way that it's set, you set it up, um, then the accuracy gets better and better. How do they, how do you increase accuracy? Uh, through repetition, 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 and then finally repetition. So, but, but if you're doing a, a project for a, a person, is it just you doing it or do you increase accuracy by bringing on more uh, multiple re remote, remote viewers? So I've got a team of remote viewers, which have worked for me before. They're from all over the world. They all have different skill sets. And I know that if I've got a heavy sketching project, I'm going to farm it out to one of my viewers who's good with that. And I'll look at the session and I'll say, 
you know, this is interesting. I liked what you sketched here. Can you sketch more of that? But when I say that to them, I don't tell them what the cue is. I don't tell them what the answer is. I don't tell them what they're working on until the project is closed and all the data has been collected. Why? Because I don't want to contaminate them and I don't want them to start making stuff up based on what they think I want as the project manager or the tasker. Or, or maybe our ego wants to say, oh, I know, I know what it is. I know what it is. And then you, but the heart, we want, we want to listen to our heart, right? So how do, how do we distinguish those two? It doesn't stop. So even me as a remote viewer, I've been training for 20 years. I say training because each session gets me better. Each session gets me more practice. We, we want to really focus on getting our information from the heart that we have. And that's our physical heart and our non-physical heart. And in the process, I teach you how to expand your heart so that it feels and it projects and it understands what's at that target site. The heart is more than just your, your thing beating blood inside of you. There's more to the heart and remote viewing the heart is a magical experience if anyone ever endeavors to try. I mean, there's a lot more to it and you can remote view a lot of different ways things work. And, but you can't prove that. You know, I can't prove that there's a non-physical connection to the heart to the universe, but my remote viewing data shows that there is. But I can't prove it because science hasn't accepted that yet. And that's kind of the feeling about remote viewing too. Well, science hasn't proven the existence of remote viewing and they won't because they deny and deny and deny and deny until then they tell you that it's true and they won't tell you that it's true until they can control it. So maybe in like three to four, four years, we're going to see the brain chip push and they're going to say, oh, now that scientific uh, science has proven remote viewing, take the brain chip and you could be a better remote viewer. Well, that's not a path you really want to go down. Who, who's who's responsible for all this? Um... There's not a who. There's not a real single person or a single agency. It's just a, a connection of of people that want to keep information contained. And so behind the scenes, they do know that remote viewing exists. Fortune 500 companies have remote viewers on staff. They can look at what's coming and they know what's coming and they prepare for that. And then they'll take action in their company based on, oh, a projection that they made. But really, they knew what was coming. So I kept asking myself, I'm like, what, what should I be asking? You know, they always say is, you know, what, what are we going to ask your higher self? or your, your inner being, or God. And what's really interesting, I guess maybe I'm a satisfied person. I'm always asking my higher self or my inner being, what questions should I be asking? That's what I'd like to know is, what, specifically for me, what is the question I should be asking? I just posted a short on my reality forecast channel. You guys can check it out. What can I remote view? And I'll continue to post really quick shorts if you want to look at those. They're like 30, 45 seconds. But to give you an idea of more of what I'm thinking and more of what remote viewing can do and what reality forecast can do, watch that space because I'm going to post more of those and try and grow the brand and reality forecast. If you want to know more about it, www.realityforecast. Suppose you had a segment <laughs> at the end that says uh, um, remote, uh, um, send me, send me a, uh, something and, and we can remote view it. And if it's really cool, we'll put you on, we'll put your whatever question it is on the show. That'd be an idea. Uh, but here's the thing is um, I have something that I lost probably when I was 21. And, but if someone were to want that, you know, you said, what, what would I want to re remote view? How would I tell you? Cause I can't really tell you about it because if i told you then i'm not giving you a, a blind target though or is there a way to do that yeah i'd have to farm it out i'd have to get a viewer to do it for me uh your thing that you lost it's in a landfill sorry to tell you oh uh, i think you're right thank you you're right no it is but it was uh i want to know what it is sure <laughs> um it's a family heirloom that was my grandmother's brother's ring from latvia Okay, so when it comes to psychics, um, psychics, they're looking at one version of the timeline, and there's multiple versions of the timeline. Is it possible that with remote viewing that we may actually, some remote viewers may not be actually uh, remote viewing uh, 
a specific timeline, they may be looking at another alternate dimension, dimensional timeline. Uh, so the, the, the remote viewing information could be totally accurate, but it's off on a different um, parallel timeline. Let me rephrase your question in the form of a question. Can remote viewers remote view different timelines? Uh, not very well, because there are an infinite number of timelines and you would have to know which designated timeline you're on. Um, I could remote view the outcome of a specific event. What would be the causal factors that happen uh, geopolitically if an action were to be taken? But that doesn't mean that it's an eventuality, that it will come true. That just means if sequence A happens, you know, it could be like a flow chart, then this will happen, this will happen, this will happen. Um, if sequence B is not taken, I can tell you which will be taken on the trajectory that we will all follow into. Mm. Well, that's what the uh, reality forecast is all about, right? Uh, but like I said, with psychics, and this really comes from Vadim Zeland. He was saying that, you know, first of all, you a psychic, you know, there's multiple timelines and and just a few different decisions can pull you into uh, a different timeline where whatever the psychic's predicting for the future, it may not happen. And he says, why would you want to even have them predict what, you know, or put that in your mind where the next future is? So he's suggesting, why not design your own reality? You choose what the future is going to be. And then uh, and that way you have more control over which uh, timeline you're going to find yourself in down the road here. There may be like 10, 10 to a hundred different timeline versions. And the one that they're, um, they're, given information on may not be the specific one that you're on what he said this is what Vadim Zillan says though he says that that um there are an infinite amount of timelines and that you're on this one and when you go if you go in this direction or that direction of timelines that, that's why it takes some time to manifest that version of yourself that you want but what he's saying though is you know a psychic can only see one timeline but that's the reason why a lot of times you know, when they are, it's not that they're an inaccurate psychic. It's just that what they're, um, but they, they only saw into one of the timelines. They, they're only going to tell you because they don't even know this information though. There's no way to gradiently determine which timeline someone is remote viewing. Uh, it's like, you know, they don't have number sequences. They don't have identifiers, but, uh, one of the things we do in remote viewing is we look at our optimum trajectory. And that's for health, that's for wealth, that's for life partner, that's for any plan contingencies so that you can look at what what steps you need to take for that optimum path to, to realize it, to bring it to fruition. Now, you could take a different path, but you know what your optimum path is now. And if you take an, a different path, that's okay. It's just going to change your path to get to your optimum path step and your optimum stage for health, for nutrition, for life partner, for a job, for vocation. And yes, you can look at the future. Yes, you can see what the best course of action is. But sometimes the optimum course for someone's health trajectory, there's nothing you can do. And they're already gone. And so you just get that they need to be made comfortable. They need to focus on positive thoughts. And at the end of life, remote viewing isn't going to fix somebody that already has uh, things riddled in their body that you can't, science can't fix. Mm. I think I found a way to find out what question to ask. And you just hit, hit it on the head there because it, it all comes down to the same like three things, um, health, wealth, and relationship. Uh, relationship sometimes may, meaning most of the time is the you're trying to find that soulmate that you want to spend the rest of your life with uh, that relationship, but you know, relationships also with um, your, your friend group, uh, your tribe that you want to be with uh, remote viewing could be good for that. But when it comes to relationship, how and this could be a whole nother podcast, but when it comes to relationship, you know, how, how can someone uh, question use remote viewing and um, feeling satisfied in that? that area of question the, the three things that people want most in life health wealth relationship if we just take the relationship how does remote viewing how would we how you, how do we go about that 
Yeah, I saw six different podcasts we could do too, but um, (laughs) how can you do that? Well, yeah, you could look at that remote viewing. You could look at uh, how relationships matter, what the problem is in the relationship, how to correct it. I have some techniques in my stage six where I go through and I can look at relationships to find out what the lack is, what the resolution is, and then people can take that and it's like a relationship counselor, but it's the unconscious and it's my unconscious and it's telling you what you need to fix a relationship. If it can be fixed, what the best course of action is fixing the relationship. Sometimes the matrix is going to give you a relationship. That's not going to work. Why? Well, because the matrix wants you to know what doesn't work so that you find the next best thing later. But if you didn't have that really bad relationship, then you wouldn't know what's good when it comes along. So it's a life lesson to learn that optimum doesn't always mean the grand sensational oneness of everything. No, it just means the next best. And that will change over time. Your next best is not always going to be the same thing if you're on a different life path to learn those lessons and get better at it. So, and that that's fixing relationship. What about finding relationship? Can remote viewing and, and in what way? Because uh, should, should someone use the re- a remote viewing to find their optimal life partner or should they wait for the universe to lo- to just they magnetize and they run into them How, what do you think well that was the exercise that i was suggesting there so when i do that for people they get the next person that they'll be with for their optimum evolution and they think that oh i found my soulmate well you can be you can have a lot of soulmates it's not just one person so mm-hmm. That soulmate has come to you, has taught you a lesson, has made you happy, has made you sad, has made you angry, and then they might go away. Well, I don't want remote viewing to make you think, I have to hold on to this person because remote viewing said they were my optimum. No, remote viewing said they were your optimum in 2019. And here we are in 2023. I would need to do another remote viewing session to find out what your optimum life partner is now. And can I tell you if that's your optimum life partner for now? Yes, we could do that through remote viewing too. And the answer would be no, time to move on. Um, so it's going to find the next best. It's going to find the, the thing that you need most to provide you the most happiness in the next like six to 12 months. And then after that, you'll have to do another session because there's a freshness state on remote viewing sessions. When When we have a relationship with someone and we love them dearly, they love us dearly, then but once we complete all of the learning that's that was necessary for both of you once that's complete then sometimes um it's time to you move on and it's sad and it hurts really bad yeah is that what you that that's kind of yeah it does but you know the you're not the only one that got a life lesson there the other person did too and so they'll make a new decision they'll make a new life path that's without you but don't hold on to what that was because it's going to just keep you down in that low vibration so embrace the change embrace what's coming ahead embrace the next learning life lesson learning relationship path for yourself yeah. remote viewing is amazing you can do a lot of things if you know how to do it if you know someone that can task these things you can learn a lot it's a great tool. I'm happy that I found it a long time ago, 20 years ago now, plus, and I'm happy to teach it to people. If you're interested in learning more about what Daniel and I want to say, ring a bell, smash a like button, subscribe and like realityforecast.com or go to ultimate uh, www.ultimaterealitysurfing.com. Thanks, Daniel. It's good seeing you again. You too, brother. Hey, have a great weekend, everybody. We love you very much. Uh, enjoy yourself. Follow the right path, learn your intuition, learn remote viewing, and we'll see you next time.